Welcome back. In our last lesson, we created the basic parts that make an MVC component work. Now we're going to start fleshing it out to look a bit more like a real component by adding the page title in the toolbar. Let's jump into the view.html.php file in the Hello View. I've got a snippet here for a basic view with toolbar, and I need to fill in a few values. The name of the component in proper case, the name of the component in uppercase, and finally the name of the component folder. You can see I've added two methods to the class, a display method and an add toolbar method. Now the JView class already has a display method, that's what gave us the result in the last lesson, so we're actually overriding the parent method to allow us to add the toolbar support. You can see we are calling the add toolbar method and then we are calling the display method in the parent class, mainly because we're quite happy with the job it's doing and we don't really want to reinvent the wheel. I'm just going to jump down to the add toolbar method and comment out a few lines because it's a bit early for us to be using them. I want to comment out the line starting with dollar can do and then the if block at the end of the method. This leaves us with a call to the J toolbar helper class's title method. All we do for now is pass the title that we want to see on the page. But as you can see, it's a little different from before because this is the first time we've passed a string to Joomla's translation system. We do this using a class called JText. Let's talk about that class for a moment. JText is a static class and it has a number of useful methods. The method you will use most is the underscore method. The reason we chose underscore is because PHP has a built-in translation system using a function called getText. And PHP has an alias or a shortcut to this function being a function called underscore. So in the Joomla API we decided to mirror that functionality. All we do is pass a key to the jtext underscore method and the translation system does the rest. It will try to look up the key in any .ini files that Joomla has loaded. You should recall we've played a little with the .ini files in previous lessons. If the translation system does not find any matching key, it will simply display whatever text was passed to the method. To avoid naming collisions with other extensions, we generally have a naming convention for the language keys that is to prefix them with the name of the extension. In this case, we can see that we've used the folder name of the component as that prefix. Let's have a look at what we've got so far in the browser. When we refresh the page, we can see that the toolbar area is now expanded and our page title is showing. We can also see that our language key has passed straight through the system and Joomla is just displaying it. It obviously hasn't found a match, so let's fix that up. Let's jump back into view.html.php and copy the language key. As a rule, because the key needs to be uppercase in the .ini file, we also make language keys uppercase in the code as well. I'm just going to copy that key and then open one of the files we created in an earlier lesson, the en-gb.comhello.ini file, which is the main language file for the component. It's currently empty, so I'll use my ini file header snippet to start the file off. And then I'll just paste my key into place. Now remember that we need to wrap the value in double quotes so that the file will parse without error. We can save that language file and jump back to the browser. Refresh the page and we can see that the translation system is picking up our value from the .ini file. And it's starting to look a little more like a typical component. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson we'll set up the basic access controls for the component and add the options button to the toolbar. See you back real soon.